Good morning, everyone. Hope you are doing well. This is Ms. Pamela Tini giving the physics course for grade 9 American system. Today we are going to study chapter 5, section 1, Newton's laws of motion. If you all can please open your books on page 151 so you can follow up with me. Newton's first law of motion. So in this section we are going to study the three laws of motion that Newton stated. Now we are going to begin with Newton's first law of motion. It states that an object at rest remains at rest as long as no net force acts on it. And an object moving with constant velocity continues to move with the same speed and in the same direction as long as no net force acts on it. So this law shows the relationship between force and motion and it states that whenever there is motion, there is force. Recall that force is a push or a pull. Force is characterized by two quantities. First, the strength or magnitude of the force. Second, the direction of the force. So force is a vector because it is characterized by direction and not a scalar which is only characterized by magnitude. Net force. The net force exerted on an object is the vector sum of all the individual forces that acts on it. The phrase no net force means that the net force, also called the total force, is equal to zero newtons. So when we say there is no net force, we do not mean that there is no force acting on the object. We only mean that the combination of the forces is equal to zero newtons. A book at rest on a table is an example of no net force. So here we can see in the image, the book is at rest on the table. Two forces act on it. The force of gravity exerted downwards on the book and the force exerted by the table which is exerted upwards on the book. They are equal and opposite in direction. This is why they cancel each other and the net force or total force is equal to zero newtons. And there is no motion. The book is at rest unless an outside force acts on the book. Inertia. Newton's first law is also known as the law of inertia. Inertia is, a is the tendency of an object to resist any change in its motion. For example, an object at rest doesn't start moving on its own, and an object moving with constant velocity doesn't alter its speed or direction unless a force causes the change. This is what inertia means. So the object needs force in order to change its motion. It resists any change in its motion, and this is called inertia. Inertia depends on mass. The inertia of an object depends on its mass. As the mass of the object increases, its inertia increases, and its tendency to resist a change in its motion increases as well. For example, a huge truck needs more fuel to move than a small car, and it also needs a greater force to stop. Why? Because it has a greater mass than the small car, thus it has a greater inertia. Now we are going to talk about Newton's second law of motion. Newton's second law of motion states that the acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the net force acting on the object and inversely proportional to the object's mass. So acceleration is equal to net force over mass. Acceleration is measured in meters per second squared, Force is measured in newtons and mass is measured in kilograms. As the net force increases, the acceleration increases as well because they are directly proportional. As mass increases, the acceleration decreases because they are inversely proportional. So in this law, Newton shows a more specific relationship between force and mass, uh, force and motion, I'm sorry. By rearrangement of this law, we can calculate the mass if we know the net force and the acceleration of an object. So mass is equal to net force over acceleration. To calculate the net force, net force is equal mass times acceleration. Notes. To convert from grams to kilograms, we divide by 1000. So if in the given, the mass is given in grams, you divide it by 1000 to get the answer in kilograms and then you calculate. Before calculating acceleration or mass, we find the net force by adding the individual forces. So if in the given they do not give us the net force, they gave us the individual forces, we should add them according to their directions and then we put them in the equation to calculate acceleration or mass. 
For example, what is the acceleration of a 30 kilogram table when Rob pushes it with a force of 90 newtons to the right and Bob pushes it with a force of 20 newtons to the left? So in this example, we need to write the given and imagine the situation. The given is mass is equal to 30 kilograms, so it's already in kilograms, we do not need to convert it. Force 1 is 90 newtons and it's positive because it's to the right. Force 2 is 20 newtons and it's negative because it is to the left. And the unknown is acceleration. As we can see in the image, we can imagine the situation and know that the table has four forces exerted on it. First, the gravitational force which pulls, pulls the table downwards. The normal force which is the force of the surface, and here it's the ground, which pushes the table upwards. Fn and Fg are equal and opposite in direction. This is why they cancel each other. And we have F1, which is the force exerted by Rob to the right, and F2, which is the force exerted by Bob to the left. So in this case, we need to calculate the net force or the total force. Net force is equal Fg plus Fn plus F1 plus F2. Fg and Fn cancel each other because they are opposite in direction and equal in magnitude. So we have left F1 and F2. F1 is equal to 90 and F2 is equal to negative 20. So the total force or the net force is equal to 70 newtons. Then now we can calculate the acceleration. We put its equation. Acceleration is equal net force over mass, 70 newtons over 30 kilograms. And we get the answer as 2.33 meter per second squared to the right, because the direction of acceleration is in the direction of the net force. So let's say if the net force was to the left or upwards, then the acceleration will also be to the left or upwards. Please, as a homework, read examples 5.2 and 5.4, page 155 and page 157, and solve numbers 1 and 2, page 155, and numbers 3, 4, 5, page 158. Thank you, and good luck.